thanking you for your love, thanking you for your faithfulness, thanking you for all that you've done, Lord, and all that you're doing in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to move by your spirit. We ask that you will accomplish your divine will in our lives, Lord. You know what we have need of, Lord, and we pray that you meet those needs according to your word. We ask that you continue to move by your spirit. Bless our Sunday school, our service, and we'll give you praise, we'll give you glory, and we'll give you the honor that you truly deserve. We ask these things, Christ, in your name. Amen and amen. Praise God. All right. So... Let me see myself. So we've been talking about what First Corinthians, what 13, 13, right? And we've gone through the or the Bible says in 13, it says, and now abide at these three faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is love. Charity. What is charity? What is charity? Love. Love. All right. So charity, some version of the Bible say charity. King James says charity. Uh, others may just insert the word love. So now abide these three. Now abides these three. Faith, which is belief, which is trust, which is confidence. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then hope, just summarizing it, something that we look forward to with anticipation and expectation in God, and people have hope outside of God as well. And now charity, we're going to talk about the love of God, right? The love of God. So, and I believe the next Sunday school lesson coming up is dealing with First Corinthians chapter 13. Um, yeah, the last one for this Bible study. Bible study, excuse me. Thank you. Bible study, I believe it's covering First Corinthians. Not, I don't believe it. I'm ready. It is. Uh, covering First Corinthians chapter 13. So here in this in this word, I found the three parts um, of First Corinthians 13. Now we want to start. We're talking about charity. Charity. And then maybe for about a week or two, we'll just combine them all together. And we'll use scriptures um, that combine them all together here. So, anyway, now abides faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these, the greatest is charity, correct? Is this recording? I don't know if I, it is, it is, okay. Oops, all right, here we go. All right. That's what all this. So, I just wanted to show you um, for the next about four weeks, maybe five weeks, whatever the case, I just wanted to show you here what we'll be going through, okay? So, week one, let's Week one, we'll deal with John 3.16, love in action. Love in action, week one. So you can reference this, you can write it down. Week one, today, John 3.16, love in action. Week two, unless the Lord redirects, right? So right now, I was putting this together and just giving myself some uh, thoughts on where to pursue. Uh, as I was praying, what to pursue, what to focus on. And we can never exhaust love, right? Teaching on love, but we can get a, a, a foundation. Not that you don't have a foundation, but a little different exposure, whatever the case. So week two, Romans 5.5, 5, then we'll focus on agape love. And I put agape love, and you'll see for a reason there. Agape love in our hearts. Agape love in our hearts. The Bible says there, uh, Romans 5, 5, the latter portion, and the love of God has been shed abroad 
in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit, right? So then week three, we'll get into uh, 1 John chapter 4. But we'll just deal with half of the uh, scriptures, 7 and 13, they're about uh, dealing with agape love, divine love, in relationship, right? In relationship with God, in relationship with our fellow man. And then week four, we'll go to the second part of that, First John chapter 16, verse 21, and we'll deal with uh, our love made perfect. Our love made perfect. So it's just wanted to give you a, a kind of an overview a little bit. All right. So. So when we... When we think about love, yeah, I want to move this thing out of the way. That's okay. When we think about love, there's there's variations of love, right? Of the word love. Of the word love. The first one being, and this is just a real quick, simple, boom kind of definition. Not in any particular order, but eros, or eros, or eros. From the Greek word, and that's where the word is derived erotic, erotic, right? And that's more of a more sensual, a more sensual, what we call love, more sensual love, creative, oft, often sexual yearning, uh, love desire, erotic, eros. And then one that many of us are familiar with is filio, or brotherly love. Like the city of Philadelphia is considered the city of brotherly love. If you've ever been to Philadelphia, you may think different. <laughs> <laughs> you may not think it's <laughs> all that brotherly love, right? So we have eros, or eros, however you want to pronounce it, filio, and then we have this word called agape, agape or divine love, and that's what we want, to, we want to focus on, because that's the love, that divine uh, love of God that comes from God. And really, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that's what is focused on, is a godly love. I remember years ago, in like 1991, I got this invitation to go to a wedding, and a uh, nice wedding, family member, and they had, all the literature in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I was in Bible school at the time, so I was like, really, like, it's not a copy love, it's a erotic love, but anyway. <laughs> but it, it was really neat, it was really good how they put it together. But I was thinking, well, agape love, and I think I was taking a class uh, on this particular chapter. We had this one class, one semester of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 only. One chapter, a whole semester, and at the end of the class, what we have to do, this is our text. We have to quote the whole chapter verbatim, and not quote it verbally, but we have to write it down. We can the superior, we have to, everything has to be exact. King James Version, right? And, uh, boy, that was a stressful test. So we <laughs> it was good, it was a good test. And then within that class, there was, uh, and this is a good test that anyone could do a good study. Everything 1 Corinthians 13 says, right? What agape divine love is. You look up the opposite of that. And you say, so when the Bible says love is kind, you look up the opposite of that and you find what the opposite is. And then you ask God, is that opposite in my heart? Because it's easy to say, I have God's love in my heart, right? Mm -hmm. But you look up the opposite and you find out what the opposite of kind is or gentle is, and then you have something that's identified in your heart, and that would, uh, should cause a prayer, right? And the scripture says in the first, uh, excuse me, Psalm 139, verse 23, 24, search me, O God, and know my heart, right? Try me and know my thoughts. All right. So, Agape, love that is divinely spiritual. Uh, 
Love that is divine. Divine love, all right? So, just want to talk about it just briefly here. So, love. The Bible tells us in 1 John, chapter 3, verse 18. So, when we talk about love, John, the beloved disciple, he talks about it. And he talks about Jesus. So, you'll, you'll read a number of references in the gospel of Jesus according to John, right? He, he's considered the beloved disciple. He had this, they all had a relationship with Jesus, but he was the one who laid his head on Jesus. It's just different things as you read it in the Bible. John described Jesus like no one else. And each chapter he, he described Jesus, and that's a good study too. In each chapter, what is the description of Jesus in each chapter of the gospel of John. He's the water of life. He's the bread of life. He's the door. He's on and on, right? John described him like that. No one else did. So he's the same writer of first John chapter, uh, first John, first, second, and third John. So we began to see a trend here, right? And he gives us a discord on love, discord, discourse, on not discord, a discourse on love starting in chapter 3 of 1 John, but more extensively, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and completing that chapter. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Corinth, he gives us, he just puts in there 1 Corinthians chapter 13, right? More, um, not condensed. This is more condensed in 1 John. But he just really opens it up as far as the agape divine love for us to reflect on and say, is that in my heart? Because it's easy to say. So John says this. He says, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You know, I was thinking about that, and I put up a couple images. Love is not what you say. It's what you do. Love is action, right? It's action because, and there's a, another right here. Uh, let's, let's go on halfway off. But love is a verb. Without action, it's merely a word. Because it's easy to say, oh, I love you. I love you. People say, I love you, and they don't even show up. Right? They don't even show up. So, that, that verbal statement, which we need to hear that, I'm not saying we don't need to hear it, but it must be followed up with action. Because there's nothing, to me, there's nothing more disappointing than to hear someone say, I love you, I'll be there for you, I'll pick you up or whatever the case, but when it comes time for you to get picked up, they don't even show up, they don't call, they don't anything. That's so disappointing, that's so disturbed. So with that type of love, you lose faith in that person. You lose hope. You don't look forward to them showing up. You have hope. You have faith as a result of them saying they love you, but because they didn't show up, because their actions didn't follow up with their statement, you lose faith in them. You lose hope in them. So you see how this can work in the opposite as well as in the court, right? So John said it here. He says, my little children, don't just love in words. Only, I'm going to insert the word only. But also in deed, in action, in action. And we see that in John 3.16. The Bible says, for God did what? God so loved the world. Now that's a word, right? That's a statement being made. And really that's a statement that we can reflect back on throughout the Old Testament, right? Throughout the Old Testament, you can reflect on those, what is it? 39 books, right? It's 39 books, right? Right? Yeah. Don't, just because the preacher says right, don't say yeah. <laughs> 39 and 27, 66. All right. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. We get so accustomed. Preacher, I remember going to this one conference years ago, and everyone was shouting like a thousand of us in there. And everyone was on, and the preacher would be up there saying, he said, did you guys hear what I said? And they're like, you're talking about Jesus. He said, no. He 
think like hot dogs are good to eat, and everybody's like, hey, man! And no one was really listening. No one was really listening, right? They were just all caught up in the moment, right? And because the preacher was up there saying something, it had to be about Jesus, so an assumption was made, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes that's how it is with just a verbal statement of love. I'm going to assume if I say I love you, they're going to trust me. No, trust is something you build. All right. So the Bible says this, for God so loved the world that he did something. He gave. Giving is an action. Is it not? Giving requires something more of the individual than just making a statement. It's easy to say that. Oh, I love you. Well, people know I really love my wife. Well, I can tell you all I love my wife, but she knows I love her by my action that follows. It's easy to boast that statement or statement. Easy to do that, but it's following up because love is sometimes requires sacrifice. It requires obedience. If we really love God, we obey God. How many have already read the email the Sister Sue sent that? Obedience-based? Okay. I read it. I'm a reader. I like reading. So I read it. <laughs> Obedience-based, right? That should be what Christianity is built on. If, if I say I love God, I should obey God. If I don't obey God, how can I say I love God? I'm lying to myself. All right. That's another lesson, but anyway. Uh, for God so loved the world that God did something. So it wasn't just a word only. He actually did something. And not only did he do something, he did his best. Divine agape love inspires us, the Christian, the believer, not just to do a half-hearted action or service, to do your best because you're doing it as unto the Lord. Lord. All right. So love is a verb without action. It is merely a word. And most of us as adults and even kids, unfortunately, kids experience that with some biological parents. Notice the word after this. Biological parents. Because anybody can be a biological donor. Say that and keep it clean. <laughs> Anybody can be a biological donor, but it's different to be a loving parent. Right? All right. So I just put a couple of deals up here. I like this. Uh, with, uh, what's her name? Mother Teresa. Sister Teresa, Mother Teresa. She says this. Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. And you got to kind of understand what she's saying. Love has to be put into action, and that action is service. So I serve God because I love God. And we'll get into that in First John chapter 4. I love God, and as a result of me loving God, I'm going to serve God. Right? That's, for me, that's why I really like the book of Acts. Because you can never exhaust the book of Acts. It's the book of action or the book of love, right? It's the acts of really the believers, not just the apostles, but even us today. We're like Acts chapter 29. There's only 28 chapters that we read in the book of Acts, but it's still going on in the church. So, and that action is based on our love for God. So it's never really exhausted. So action that must or Love has to be put into action, and that action is service, service. Then she said the same, kind of the same thing there. She said, prayer in action is love. So when we pray, prayer in action. I can get down and pray and go through the ritual of praying, and there is no fruit. There is no produce. I'm just going through it. I'm like the Pharisee in the temple. Right? Well, I'm praying, I feel good about myself. That's the only one who feels good about me. But prayer is, in action, is love. Right? 
And love in action is service. And this is just a third viewpoint I might think of. So love in action, love in action, reaching out, helping someone, not reaching out, waiting. That's contradictory. Reaching out, waiting for something. But reaching out, helping someone. The, the church, the Christian church, it has to be, it should be, the foundation is love. It must continue. Hence, he says, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, he says, now abides faith, hope, and charity, or love, agape, divine love, not erotic, not filial, but agape, divine love, and we'll get into more of that next week with uh, Romans chapter 5, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. He said, now abides these three. They're all wonderful attributes in our life. But the greatest is what? Is love. Because as a result of love, it's going to produce faith. It'll produce hope. That's where we jump over Galatians chapter 5, verse 23, and says, you know, the fruit, singular, fruit of the Spirit is love. And then as a result, on the parent level, it's going to spring forth or give birth to gentleness, kindness, temperance. Right? It's going to deliver. I have love in my heart. It's going to deliver kindness. It's going to deliver gentleness. And we'll get into that on Bible study. You'll see. You'll say, charity is kind. Charity is long suffering. But at the top of it is love and then kindness. Love and then gentleness. Anyway. Praise the Lord. We're going to stop right there. Amen. So let's pray before we close. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with thanksgiving. We thank you for this opportunity, this time. And Lord, as we said, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. So what's being shared here is not anything new. But we pray that you reinforce that which we have heard today in our hearts, Lord. Challenge us, stir us, stimulate us by the Holy Ghost, Lord to be more like you, Jesus. Conform us into the image of our Lord and Savior. We ask the Holy Spirit power uh, to conform us, make us, be, act, and live more like Jesus. As you said in your word, Jesus, by this, by love, shall all men know that we are your disciples. We are followers of you. So we pray that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts today. That it moves us out of our comfort zone. It moves us out of ourselves. And we fall in line, in alignment with you, Jesus. You know what we need today? We pray that those spiritual, mental, physical, financial, domestic needs be met in our lives this day. And we thank you for it. Amen. 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 Praise God.